Hey, Melissa Joan Hart here, and I am in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. Now, I have to tell you, when I was a little ye little Brian, my dream interview was you. No way! So seriously, you were making dreams come true today. Oh, that's awesome! I really mean that. Like, growing up watching you, <laughs> the dream come true. Thank you. I used to always, like, think I was... Had magic Sabrina. in your finger. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, now you're here to talk all things No Good Nick. Mm -hmm. For those who haven't seen it yet, what would be your quick pitch for the series? No Good Nick is a hard one to describe for me because it's such a unique show. So it starts off very situational comedy, you know, very um, traditional family sitcom. Uh, little girl knocks on the door, she becomes our foster daughter, and basically she's scamming us the whole time. So actually, in reality, it's very much a dramedy, very much um, a family mystery, but it's also serialized. And we lay little Easter eggs throughout the whole thing. So there's little there's little things if you watch it back. It's meant for binge watching. It's built for binge watching. Which so when I you did. watch it back, you'll see if you watch it again, yeah. you'll see like all the little hints that are already in there. Can you kind of talk about that dynamic of it being a comedy but it having that serious layer, which is her plot? Yeah, so it's an interesting show because like especially the very first episode seems very typical comedy family. And as the show develops and these layers unfold, um, you find out what she's doing and that she's actually this, like, anti-hero. Yeah. That while you're rooting for her, you're also kind of not, like, she's doing wrong. She's doing bad things to this family. And you don't quite understand it, but as you start to sort of understand her reasoning, you start to sort of, like, each episode I feel like you, you change your alliance with who you think is in the right on each episode. I like to say it's like, this is us with elements of Game of Thrones. That's not true. But <laughs> maybe a little more House, That's like the way really House was like yeah. the anti-hero. You know, you you wanted, you knew he was like not necessarily a good guy, but he had good purpose. You know, he was doing good things, but not necessarily in a nice way. So um, it's just interesting to watch her and watch the whole story develop. And my character, it's really fun to play Liz, because she's she doesn't want Nick around. She doesn't think we should take this kid and we have enough on our plate. Like, why should we have to take care of someone else's kid? So she doesn't have a whole lot of heart, but um, she's very, like, level-headed, business-minded, career-driven. Um, and so it's really fun because I haven't really played... I always played, like, sort of the sweet girl next door, and now yeah. I'm getting to play sort of the selfish... I take care of my family and that's about it kind of person. <laughs> um, you've been directing since Sabrina, right? That's yeah. correct? Yeah, I started, uh, yeah. On Sabrina, I started directing my first um, television show, and then um, I did a bunch of Sabrina, and I did some other shows for like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, and a short film. And, and Goldberg's. Now I've done. A, I did yeah. Goldberg's last year. That was really fun. I was supposed to do a few this year. But okay, I was wondering. I was did supposed you, to do Goldberg's okay. and Schooled, but well, I couldn't because I was on a Netflix show. So. Were you interested in directing No Good Nick though at all? Yes, I do. That? Um, they have a funny rule about first season: nobody crosses over jobs. So I'm an actor this season. Okay. Next season, I can direct. But not yet. Going back to the younger actors on the show, you posted this sweet message on Instagram recently when they were all at the, oh, they went to the Kids, Kids Choice, Choice Awards. Awards. Did, what were the conversations like on set with them? Did you give any like advice on like kind of the journey they're about to embark yeah, on? Yeah, a little bit. Like as things come up, I'll just I feel like I'm Sean and I are like the old folks on the set now. It's so funny because he and I the other day, literally like maybe a few days ago, said to each other, like, do you, is it weird that we're like the old ones on the set now? Like, even amongst the crew, like it used to be that we were always the young kids on set. It's so weird still that we're like the we're the mature ones, like leading the way. It's supposed to be the good example. Um, Sean's over there, like he comes up with a handshake for everybody. He's constantly doing the oh, you got something on your shirt thing. You know, he's got all the dad it's jokes. The best joke, yeah. yeah, and so it's funny because they they're really really sweet and very respectable respected both about like our jobs and our careers and the paths we've taken to get here. And they listen and they. Like, you know, they, they really take in our experiences in a way that our own kids would never do. Um, and we listen to them about, like, trends and what's cool, but we're also teaching them about, like, 90s music and 80s and movies and classic movies. And um, their homework this weekend was to watch a Winona Ryder movie. So we'll see if That's they did awesome. it. And when I get to work tomorrow, I'll find out. Now, looking back to Clarissa Explains It All, is there advice you would give yourself back then? Um, oh, 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 oh. There's advice I would, I would just, uh, I would, like, to have been a little more protected maybe on the show. Okay. <laughs> um, as far as like get more rest, no. not so much work. It was a, a grueling schedule um, to be going to school and to be working on that show. It was 70 hour weeks. We were working six days a week. Um, we were doing, um, it was just like the, the amount of schoolwork and the amount of work I had to do, the amount of memorizing the monologues. Like if they could have just broken up the monologues a little, I probably would have had an easier life if I didn't have to start memorizing the monologues on Sunday to film on Wednesday. But I had these 
four page monologues about three or four times an episode and I would do it all direct to camera. But actually I just watched an episode the other day. I put a piece up on my Instagram, just a piece of an episode, and it's a monologue. And I noticed I looked from camera to camera. So they could have totally cut. I didn't have to memorize the whole thing in four pages. But you better believe like, if I messed it up, we had to start again. And like the long pauses in between takes and stuff. I just wish I could have been like, let's move things along a little bit. I always got strep throat. I wasn't oh allowed gosh. to go home. Like, you know, it was my show. I had to like keep going, power through it. So it was a little tough, but um, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot on that show. And I learned a lot about production on that show. Like, uh, you know, one of the guys came in and looked at the lights and you said... You said you oh. learned about directing on that show, Yeah, too. I yeah. did. Because I, I learned about, like, camera shots, and because back then you didn't really have... You had to do a line cut of the show. You basically had to edit while yeah. you were going. So I looked at the director's scripts, and I would see that, and I would, like... You know, one of the lighting uh, electricians walked on the set one day and said, I need a single half double. And I'm like, what's a single half double? And so they taught me. And I learned how to use the lighting board. And I learned, you know, how to run a boom and all that stuff. So it was fun. And when directing Sabrina, you said that you were kind of a bit more pushy than you are today. Can you kind of talk about that? And Sabrina? Your, yeah. I might still be pushy. <laughs> um, you know what? I was anxious to always get done with the work. Like, you know, there's a lot of downtime on set. And it was, it kills me. Like, when there's this, like, dead space and there's nothing to do and... Um, so I just was trying to, I always try to move things along and I'm always like yelling at the AD team, going up to the cameras, do we get it? What do we need? Going to the writers, what's the matter? What do we need? And like, I still do it today on this show a little bit where I'll be like, hey guys, can we, can we get our notes quickly? So I'm we don't picturing you yelling minutes? at someone, I'm like, what? Yeah, I did a little bit of like, can we do this? Now I'm a little more respectable. I walk up and I'm like, hey, what's taking so long? Are we good? <laughs> can we, get, can we move on? Or, you know, so it's just, it's hard as an actor too sometimes when you are doing a scene and you take like a 10 minute break to get those notes and then you have to get back into the scene. It's like, can we just do it a few times over? And if you don't get what you want, just tell us that one or two thing that you missed that we can, so we can go back. So it's a little hard when there's like a lot of downtime. Um, you were at the Netflix headquarters recently, which is this magical world. Yeah. What has been your experience working with Netflix for No Good Nick? It's been great. I mean, um, I love that the company in general, like with their television production especially, they allow um, producers to produce. They allow you know, creators to be creative. Um, instead of trying to think that they know everything about how a show should be put together, they hire creative talent and they allow them to be creative. They don't really have that much say in who they cast or how they do the show. They come in with their notes for sure, but they don't try to, you know, it's not the, the minutia, the, the like the micro handling of everything. They um, they really like allow the collaboration of the creative people to happen. And then they just kind of, you know, weigh in on it. Um, and their headquarters are so cool. I yeah. just spent the afternoon over there and like, you, you just know, get lost there. Yeah. I might have stolen a pillow. Did they have a no good Nick name for a conference? They don't yet. Okay. I don't think so. Not, not that I saw. I saw a ton of others. I saw the Fuller House one, uh, you know, and all the windows have the pictures on them. And outside right now there's the Sabrina, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is all over the walls. Like they have projection on the walls. And there's 11, you know, from Stranger Things. There's like the, the Funko Pop head thing, giant. I tried to steal that from the lobby, but it's very big and heavy. Couldn't get that out of there. I did steal a pillow. Um, They're gonna find the I pillow. I can find that in my, I can put that in my purse, but uh, yeah, they awesome. might come after me for that one. And you know, a few uh, bananas and cashews from the lobby, but otherwise we're good. Uh, speaking of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, also on Netflix, did you watch the part one, part two? I didn't. Now? I so I did a social media thing with Netflix where yeah. I watched it for them, like. Um, I watched it and they videotape my reaction. That's about as much as I've seen of it. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's just different. It's different than my um, than the way our show was. So I, I'm glad it's different. Would you ever want to join the show in some capacity? I think if it or? wasn't done in the right way, yeah. maybe I won't say no, but I don't see it happening. Yeah. Looking back to your days on Sabrina, what are some of your favorite memories from working on? Oh, there's so many. Um, we took the whole crew to Animal Kingdom when it opened in Disney World. And they flew the entire crew down there. We had a blast. The park stayed open late for us. We were filming. I actually got stuck on a ride instead of filming, and the sun was going down, so we were kind of freaking out about that. I was stuck on a safari ride when they needed me on set. Um, but we just had such fun. Like, the cat was um, a great co-star. Always knew his lines. Always hit his mark. So that's, you know, nothing I was going to ask you, there. who do you miss more, working with Salem or Elvis, the alligator? <laughs> Elvis was rarely around, believe it or not. They probably brought him in once every four episodes, and I wasn't allowed to touch him. It was this whole thing. If he bites you, he's got baby teeth, you pull his finger, your finger out, all his teeth will come out, and he'll die. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not going to touch the alligator. But, um, and it was only, like, this big. But I did love it when I came to set, but, it, like, all I could, the closest I could get was, like, a few feet away, kind of looking down, like, oh, cool. You know, but um, Salem, like, the cat, the real live cat, had to have cat food all over the set, so the set always smelled like tuna fish. It was 
gross. But uh, but we had such fun. Yeah. I have such great memories of everything from playing like Rapunzel um, and working with like Phil Fondacaro and like running through fields of flowers with him, like holding hands. And he played um, um, what's Rapunzel's um, the guy who locks her in the tower. Can't remember his name, but he was in nu numerous episodes. But like with Beth Broderick and Caroline Ray, and um, and we all still keep in touch. The years with Soleil Moonfry and Elisa Donovan and the college years and. Just a blast. Years. And I had, like, all my boyfriends were on the show, all my best friends, all my sisters. I watched an episode the other day that my husband was in, and I realized my little sister was in it, too. So it was, it was fun. What has it meant to you to kind of play these two iconic characters that have shaped so many childhoods and so many... It's awesome. I mean, look, I watched shows like Bewitched and um, I Dream of Jeannie on reruns on Naked Night. I'm dying to do this with you, like, the... <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I watch like Bewitched and I Dream a Genie on like Netflix, uh, not Netflix, oh my gosh, Nick at Night, right? Like, so not, I wasn't of that generation, but my generation watched it. No. And those were shows when Barbara Eden came on our show, and of course, um, uh, Samantha um, uh, was already, Elizabeth Montgomery was already passed away, but like, we had like, you know, we had Barbara Eden on our show, on Sabrina, and we had like all these iconic characters. And to know that like now I'm one of those is, it makes me feel old, but also it's it's awesome. Like it's it's what everyone wants. It's like every it's funny because everyone wants just like every band wants that one hit, but then they hate that one hit and they never want to play that one hit. Every actor wants that one role that's iconic, but then also you play against that the rest of your career. But I'm lucky because I've had numerous, yeah, you know. And so. now audiences are just finding Melissa and Joey. Yeah. Like I know internationally, it's just going international. So even though it was on in the states for a while, it's now having another resurgence overseas. And now I got this one coming out, so I'm I've just I get to keep going. So it's nice. That's so great. <laughs> it's, I can't believe I'm talking to you still. So. Uh, for No Good Nick, uh, it ends season one with a bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah. Where do you think season two will go? Well, I know. Oh, um. yeah. <laughs> Where does season two go? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it, the writers are really brilliant. I'll just say that. I'll say, like, this show has so many spoilers, I really can't give yeah. away too much. But um, the... The show really does develop and it, and it starts to unravel and I think season two you might find it to be a little bit more serious and a little bit more intense and some emotional stuff comes out. What I like about the show is it's real. It's yeah. like it's really got a lot of other layers to it and if you, you know, in a family you have funny moments and you have sad moments and you have heartbreaking moments and you have kind of like, eh, what? Like, you know, you ha and you have confusion and you have bad communication and I, I feel like we have all of that in the show. So I think that, you know, 15-year-olds will love to watch it with their, like, 42-year-old parents, you know? <laughs> Make sure you watch it. Now streaming on Netflix. Thank you so much yeah, for being here. Yeah, thank Seriously, you. Seriously, this is great.